All right, this is, you ready? This is chapter eight. Um, we're gonna talk about the p-value method. Um, before we do that, we have to review what alpha represents. Alpha represents the area outside the critical values. So if it's a left tail test, for example, alpha would be the area to the left of that critical value. Now that critical value could be a z, a t, or a chi-squared, depending on what type of uh, problem you're doing. All right, if it was a right tail test, there'd be a critical value on the right. Alpha would be the area to the right of that critical value. Um, this is, the striped area is called the critical region um, or the rejection region. And alpha is that area. So if alpha is 0.10, that whole area would be 0.10. If it's two-tailed, then half of 0.10, 0.05 would be in each tail, and there'd be two critical values. Alpha represents the probability of type one error, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. So if you decide to do some type of study and you use alpha equal 0.05, you know that you still have a 5% chance that you're going to reject the null even though it really should be true. Okay? So if you were going to do a study on, let's say, um, some type of drug that maybe treated some type of disease, do you think you'd want to use a large alpha value or a small alpha value? Would you want your probability of error to be large or small? Small. Small, yeah. If it's something important, like, I mean, something in medicine is usually pretty important, you want to have a very small um, chance of type 1 error. So, 0.01 might be a good number. But if you're doing something in education where you maybe you're just work, trying to figure out whether this instructional method works better than this instructional method, it's not quite as vital. Nobody's going to die if you're wrong, right? So um, then you can use a higher alpha value. All right, the p-value. The p-value is the area outside the test value. Now, make sure I'm clear on this. The critical values come from your charts, your z, t, or chi-squared chart. The test value comes from a formula. It represents the probability of getting this test value or a more extreme test value when the null hypothesis is true. Remember that test values come from your t, z, t, or chi-squared formula. So let me give you an example here. Say that you pick an alpha value of 0.10, we'll say. Say it's left tail. Then you get, a, then you do a t, uh, let's, could be a t or z. You get a you get a test value, and you figure out from that test value that your p value, which is a probability value, is 0.07. So that tells me something about the test value. That tells me that the test value must be in the critical region. When your p-value is smaller than your alpha, you know the test value's got to be in the critical region. Why would that be? Anyone know? Why does this 0.07 being smaller than 0.10 tell me that the test value's got to be like in here? Get a better pen. Was 0.07 bigger or smaller than 0.10? Smaller. Okay, it's smaller. So. Um, 0.07's got to be a smaller area, right? Here's my test value. The area, remember the p-value is the area outside of the test value. So this, this area right in here, this area right in here is my p-value. <coughs> so alpha and p-value are both tail areas. If the p-value is smaller, the black area is smaller than the red area, then the test value must be in the critical region. So the rule that you're going to see in the book is that when the p-value is less than alpha, you're going to reject the null. Okay? It's going to be another situation. A little bit. Let's say this time it's right tail. Let's leave our p-value at 0.10. Let's say this time um, our alpha is 0.01. Alpha equal 0 0.01. Remember, alpha is the area outside of your critical value. So our critical region, this is a right tail test, has an area of 0 0.01. If the p-value is 0 0.07, is that going to mean the test value is going to fall out here in the do not reject region or in the reject region? In the do not reject, yeah, because the p-value is the area to the right of the test value. So this area 
from here over is going to be 0.07. So the fact that the p-value is greater than alpha, that tells me the test value might, must be out in the do not reject region. So when your p-value is larger than alpha, you're going to say do not reject the null. All right, so, so your rules are going to be if p-value is less than alpha, you'll reject the null. <coughs> p-value is greater than alpha, do not reject the null. What if it's two-tailed? One more example. What if it's two-tailed and let's say alpha is 0.06. So what percent would be in each tail? Anybody? 3%. That means 3% is in each tail. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to calculate, you're going to find a test value. Let's say the test value is here. Okay. And so the test value is in black. The test value is going to come from one of your formulas, your TZ or chi squared formula. Your critical value is going to be in red here. One thing different about the p-value method is you don't actually have to find the critical value. You just have to find the p-value. So let's say that you find the test value and you go to one of your charts and you look up this area right in here and you get 0 0.02. And then it, maybe the question asks you to give the p-value, okay? So then you say, well, it's two-tailed, so alpha actually includes both tails, doesn't it? <coughs> so we, can't, we don't want to compare two tails to one tail. We want to compare two tails to two tails. So if the total of both tails is 6.06, .06, then we should double this number, too. Take 2 times 0 0.02. So we're actually looking at both of these areas here, which would be 0.04. And the fact that 0.04 is less than 0.06 tells me I should do what? Reject or not reject? Reject. Reject. Yep. When the p-value is less than alpha, that tells me the test value must fall in the critical region. So you're going to reject the null. <coughs> so the, the key is when it's two-tailed, once you find this area, you're going to have to double it before you compare it to alpha. Reasoning is that alpha is including both tails, so you got to include both tails on the p-value. You want to compare two tails to two tails, not two tail to one tail. <coughs>